fire. Uh, so you know, Sister Crimson, you know, I I I gave you the name. Uh, I call Chantel the Exalted Linus, but uh, but you are Sister Sigma. You Sister Sigma. Uh, I think that name is perfect for you, uh, Sister Sigma. And uh, and I'm gonna call you that because um, you are like Sojourner Truth. You are a voice in the wilderness. You are saying and more or less crying out in a time where truth is antithetical to the psyche of many. Where did you get your fervor from as it relates to speaking truth to power and speaking it unapologetically when you have so many hyenas coming against you (laughs) and seeking to destroy you? The majority of black women think that they're in. Mm -hmm. And it's actually the one sector that doesn't come under as much scrutiny. We've spent a lot of years scrutinizing the issues of black men. The shortcomings, the failures, the the things that black men should do, ought to do, you know, didn't do so well, and the mistakes that they've made as a collective, which is fine, except we can't ignore the other half, which is black women. Right. And black women also need to have accountability because there can be no catastrophic failure of a community such that we've suffered as a black community with only one side of this coin being held accountable or one side of the coin being at fault, which is just men and that the women don't have any uh, culpability. They don't have any say so. And they does, they've they never had a hand in uh, what we have ended up in today, which is pretty much almost on the brink of extinction, our yes. community is as we know it. Mm-hmm. So that's mm-hmm. why I'm so passionate about it. No doubt, no doubt. And I think what you're saying is not only important, um, Crimson, but also is germane um, to the epigenesis of civilization. We live in a time now where reason and logic appears to be dissipating right before our eyes. And on top of that, there are pathologies that more or less prevent women from seeing the importance of masculinity and how masculinity is not only important to the mental health of a man, but also is important to the sustainability of a nation. You said something that was very poignant, Kenya, about your father and the importance of fathers and the importance of aggrandizing fathers. Why is that so important? And then we're going to get deeper into the topic as we talk about how kosher hypergamy is not only necessary, but kosher hypergamy is something that our ancestors and the women of old practice, which is more or less contraindicated to the women that we see now here in America. Okay. Um, before I answer your question, just one uh, thing. If, if there happens to be static on my end, right. I may refresh and drop off. Okay, that's cool. You're fine. Everybody's going to be able to hear that static. Okay, um, cool. But let me go ahead and answer uh, that question. If I'm not mistaken, the question is about the use of hypergamy. Yes. Yes. Hypergamy. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, Let me start off by saying, I think that hypergamy over the course of years, particularly in the manosphere has gotten a bad rap. Right. Um, A lot of people, when they hear the word hypergamy, it automatically puts a sour taste in their mouths. And the reason why it puts a sour taste in their mouths is because women nowadays don't practice hypergamy the way that it should be practiced. Right. They practice hypergamy in a way that is actually destructive to relationships and uh, between women and men. Um, The way that men are seeing hypergamy being practiced now is let's for say for example the monkey branching mm-hmm. right from man to man i get a man and at the time in my life that we start a relationship he's good enough if i feel like i've excelled or achieved a certain level or gotten to a certain point in my life where this man isn't quite fulfilling what i think are my needs uh instead of using that hypergamy to spur him into a particular direction Uh, I decide that I need to look for another man that's of a higher status or whatever it is I'm looking for and ensure that relationship as I shut down the last relationship. This is actually rather destructive to it it doesn't facilitate trust. It actually facilitates mistrust Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. between men and women. Mm-hmm. I don't know if y'all can hear that static. Can you yeah, you yeah, I can hear it, but you're fine. If you um, want to, if you want to drop off and come back, you can, sis. Let me let me come back. Okay, all right. All right, guys. So we're talking about kosher hypergamy and carnal hypergamy. And Sister Kendra's going to pop back in in a minute. But in the meantime, shout out to my man. Um, uh, here, here she go. All right, go ahead, sis. My apologies. No, you're fine. So to continue on with the thought, and I hope that I'm answering your question. Right. Uh, because I can go off on a tangent. So if I'm not answering no, your no, question, I, just reel me back in. Right, I'll reel you back in. Go ahead, dude. Um, So it's destructive, and men are seeing it that way. And, one, and when they've given so many examples of that and understand that that is a, a, a corrupted form of hypergamy. Of course, the concept of hypergamy is going to get a negative connotation. The reality is that hypergamy is a part of female nature, right. period. And aside from its literal meaning of marrying up mm-hmm. in status, mm-hmm. uh, hypergamy is actually the desire of women to want better and better and better and better. We right. always want the best situation right. in which to survive, in which to have our children, in which mm-hmm. to live. Mm-hmm. Now, we can't always facilitate that best situation. So we look for men that are going to help us facilitate whatever we think is the best situation. Right. That goes from physical, biological standpoint, where uh, typically we will avoid procreating with men that have uh, congenital de- deformities or, you know, handicaps or things that can be passed on in the gene pool, things of that nature. So we'll look for the strongest or the biggest or the, you know, whatever. And that's from strictly a biological standpoint. We'll look for that. Um, but aside from that as well, we look for a man's stability in his life, which includes, but is not limited to his financial stability mm-hmm. in his life. Mm-hmm. So this is a normal thing. When hypergamy is done properly, we don't monkey branch from man to man to man and do all of that stuff. We will get a man with the vision, with ambition, with a goal. Mm-hmm. And what we will do is use our femininity to spur him on Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in that goal. We are supporting Mm -hmm. it, but Mm -hmm. we're also spurring him. And I've used this example before. If I'm married to my husband and we have two children in a two-bedroom apartment and I'm pregnant with a third, Mm -hmm. now I'm going to use my hypergamy. Mm, Yes. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sit with my husband and I'm going to sit date. Right. We are in a two bedroom apartment. I'm pregnant right. with our third child. Yes. We can't stay here. Right. Okay. Right. And what that's going to do is spur him into thought. Okay. Right. Now, what can I do as, as the husband to remedy this situation? Because she's right. Can we have three kids in a two bedroom apartment? No, we can't. Now, does that mean I need to work more hours? The, whatever that means for him to do. He's now going to try to do it. This actually makes him work harder. This makes him go up a level because in order to afford a bigger apartment or even a house at that point, he's going to have to do more. Yes. Right. That's Mm -hmm. hypergamy done properly. Proper. No doubt. And, you know, the word kosher in Hebrew stands for fit and proper. Um, uh, And and the Hebrew is called the skavah. The skavah means seven. And so my war cry has always been if it's if it ain't seven, it ain't kosher. If it ain't kosher, it ain't right. And it means completion because and according to Yahweh, uh, on the seventh day, everything was complete and finished. But also, um, Crimson, um, uh, I believe that men need to go through seven elemental principles in order to become optimized and understanding female nature and how female nature play a role on their psyche is not only paramount, but it's more paramount now uh, because we live in a world now where expectations are going abound, but men are not getting anything back in return. You know, uh, Harold Melvin, the blue nose and Teddy Pendergrass say it's so good to love somebody and somebody to love you back, but men are not getting that anymore. And I see it all the time in practice as a licensed clinical therapist, um, you know, where men are putting their worth aside. But you know, um, Teddy also said, uh, Crimson, that you inspire me. And see, what you're talking about is synonymous to what Teddy was talking about. Uh, He called his woman the Mona Lisa. And see, what women don't understand is that when women use kosher hypergamy, what you're talking about is not exploitative, but it's fit and proper. 
When you use your feminine grace and your feminine demure to elevate a man, that's when you start hearing that man say, you keep on um, um, rising me higher and higher. And then that synchronicity becomes more optimized. But now women think that box alone can keep a masculine evolved man in a relationship. And it can't. A man that's in his head, uh, Crimson, um, is more apt to more or less operate from a primitive mindset. But a man that's in his super ego, which is, Morality is not more or less inclined to operate in the id, which is primitive and regressive. What you're seeing now is a counterculture movement where men are actually coming together and begin to live their lives on their own terms because they are frustrated with the conditions that we see more or less manifest here in America now. But in the meantime, um, sis, um, let me shout out these cash apps real quick. Um, shout out to um, Jira Sum for the two. I appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Hello, shout out to Jira Sum for the two. The and also right? shout out to Brother Kevin White. He said for missing uh, in the show last you night. And uh, Brother Nessa Deal White. And you are the number one sponsor of the stream. But I appreciate me. Show you some more. That's a deal, right? That's a deal, right? That's a deal, right? The number one sponsor of the stream. Hold tight. All right, so, you know, Sister Crimson, you know, I. I gave you the name. Uh, I call Chantel the Exalted Linus, but uh, but you are Sister Sigma. You Sister Sigma. Uh, I think that name is perfect for you, uh, Sister Sigma. And uh, and I'm gonna call you that because um, you are like Sojourner Truth. You are a voice in the wilderness. You are saying and more or less crying out in a time where truth is antithetical to the psyche of many. Where did you get your fervor from? as it relates to speaking truth to power and speaking it unapologetically when you have so many hyenas coming against you <laughs> and seeking to destroy you. Um, well, I've always kind of been like that. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I've, always, I've always sort of been this way in terms of uh, speaking truth to power. Truth for me is a love language, mm -hmm. but it is also a very powerful tool. Truth is something that I personally cannot get by in life without. Mm -hmm. I prefer truth over any lie, no matter what the outcome of learning that truth or practicing that truth actually is, because I have a firm belief that the truth is the only thing that saves anybody from anything. And this, this, I, this is a quote that I borrow from Iyanla Van Zandt when she says, truth corrects all errors in the mind. Right. And I actually, I definitely believe that. Mm -hmm. um, truth does correct all errors, not only in the mind, but in the spirit. It corrects all errors in anything, right? The truth comes to correct things, to destroy a falsehood, Mm -hmm. to destroy false paradigms. Mm -hmm. so I've always been a person that has that has gravitated towards that and believed that wholeheartedly, which is where actually the fervor comes from. And it's where the lack of fear comes from as well. I don't fear things like being canceled necessarily or mm -hmm. things of that nature or somebody coming for the message because truth is often as well unpopular, mm -hmm. especially in a time where, where we live, where lies are the order of the day. People would rather to have a lie that makes them feel good rather than a truth that makes them feel uncomfortable. Yes, ma'am. Right. And, you know, uh, in the clinical world, Sister um, Crimson, that's consistent with an ego defense mechanism called ego syntonia. Ego syntonia simply means this. When a person's ego is syntonic, they think that their delusion is